Welcome to the Tech Simple Podcast. Independent insights into the latest AV technologies, as well as tips and best practices to optimise AV solutions for modern workplace and learning environments. Here are your hosts, David and Jonathan from Connectus AV Consulting. Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the Tech Simple Podcast. I'm Jonathan, and as always, I am joined by my good friend and colleague, David Alara. Welcome, David. G'day there, Jonathan. How's things? Great to be here again. I'm fantastic. Now, we have a special guest today on a topic that's near and dear to my heart. Who are we speaking to today? Yeah, well, I know you're an audio man, and audio is the name of the the conversation today. It's all about acoustics and you and I have had a bit of a chat on one of our very first podcasts on, on acoustics and the importance of acoustics in the workplace. But uh, this time we're actually bringing on an absolute seasoned expert uh, who's going to give us the real information and the real best practice on what to do about acoustics in the workplace generally, also in you know meeting spaces. But what I'm really looking forward to covering with him today is some of his expertise around recording professional sound. So that's going to be towards the end of the podcast today and something I can't wait to get into. So without further ado, let's welcome Daniel Natoli, who is director, co-founder of AKA Acoustics. Welcome, Daniel. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you having me on. Uh, It's an absolute pleasure to have you, mate. Uh, Appreciate you taking the time. Anytime. Now, you have been in and around audio and acoustics for many years. Is that right? Yeah. So I think my sort of background in the music and, and audio world spans back sort of 10, 15 years. I uh, started off as a, as a composer for Universal in the UK uh, for their production music team, uh, moved into working with bands and, and producing um, artists and ensembles and sort of made the, the transition into uh, the architectural acoustics and, and audio space. And yeah, been consulting for, uh, for the better part of uh, five or so years uh, under AK Acoustics. And AK Acoustics is just one of the, the companies you um, you own and, and work in. Is that right? You've got some other ones? Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. So we, we operate under the umbrella company, AK Music PTY Limited. Uh, we own a couple of commercial recording studios uh, in Sydney and around Australia. Uh, we've got a pro audio distribution company who deal with uh, high-end equipment for the recording and broadcast industries. Uh, and we've also got a couple of other companies overseas where we distribute musical instruments over in the in the CIS. So it's a bit of a niche uh, <laughs> fun yeah. group of things, but it uh, keeps, us, keeps us busy. Yeah, I can see that, mate. Every time I uh, try and get a hold of you, you already seem to be <laughs> working around the clock somewhere. So <laughs> That's it, mate. Three o'clock in the morning emails, there's nothing like it. <laughs> so it's clearly a passion for you, though. Am I right? Very, very much so, mate. Very much so. Well, that's one of the reasons, you know, we've got you here today. It's, um, I think, a privilege to have you to, to talk acoustics in the workplace. And, you know, it would be really, I think, great for the listeners just to, to get some general ideas from you about what do you think should be considered when it comes to workplaces and acoustics and why? Oh, absolutely. I think typically when we're engaged to work on a workspace, I think the idea of, you know, an office environment or a workspace has changed pretty dramatically over the last sort of five to 10 years, considering um, everyone's working arrangements and the way companies are becoming more flexible with these sort of things. So uh, we're finding, particularly in open, open plan office environments, that uh, there's quite a lot uh, of work to be done in terms of you know reduction of noise to, to reduce distractions and increase focus. We do quite a lot of work in open reception areas and lobby areas where the goal isn't always to reduce your reverberation times and noise as much as possible. Sometimes we want to take advantage of acoustics to create a sense of size or grandeur in an entrance space. So clients sort of get that sort of big monolithic feeling when they're entering a building. We deal quite a lot in terms of sort of private break rooms and meeting rooms where confidentiality and speech privacy uh, is quite important. And also in, in sort of common areas where there's quite a lot of foot traffic, where you're just preventing noise from traveling into into other common areas. So the scope of work is quite broad. But it's all about, at the end of the day, sort of increasing acoustic comfort, helping with productivity and and making people feel as though uh, they're not in in an environment where they've got sort of sound and noise and unwanted um, sort of emissions sort of grating at their their daily habits. Yeah, I guess that's key, acoustic comfort. I like the way you said that, because that that really varies, doesn't it, depending on what it is we're talking about? Because you've mentioned uh, three or four completely different things there. 
which are all relevant but have different levels of, of comfort. Absolutely. I think acoustics has been a bit of a, a bit of a dark art for such a long time where, you know, um, fields of lighting design and, and indoor air comfort were, were quite well known, but because acoustics wasn't necessarily tangible, uh, it was always one of those things where if it was well done in a space, it'd be completely unnoticeable. And it would only be when you're working in a you know, poorly treated room that acoustics would be something that comes to the forefront. So uh, it's really exciting to see um, you know, the industry is moving forward where acoustics is becoming quite a significant thing. And there's a lot of considerations as to, you know, the health benefits that come from having a, a really well treated, uh, acoustically comfortable space. That's quite an interesting point that you made just there. Most people I talk to when they think about acoustics, it's all about reducing and eliminating sound. But you, you know, you gave the example of the lobby there where, well, actually, that's not the, the purpose. So it seems like it's very dependent on the type of space, whether you want to fully control or control a little bit or amplify what's going on in the, the acoustic environment. Absolutely. I mean, there's, there's quite a lot of links to particularly speech intelligibility and the way that acoustics in a space can influence and support speech, you know, as, as well as music and other activities. So the goal isn't always to just you know, slap as many panels up as you can and reduce the reverberation time down to zero. I think sometimes the consideration of support from the room, uh, especially when you're you know, speaking to a bunch of colleagues in an auditoria presenting across quite a large area, sometimes you actually do want the reflections of the space to be able to support what's being said in the space. So, uh, yeah, we, we typically try to approach each room for the use case that it's being used for, and especially now that quite a lot of rooms are becoming multi-purpose or multimodal, uh, there's a lot of considerations in regards to not just the construction and the, I guess, the surface treatment within the room, but also how that's augmented with loudspeaker systems and other assistive technology to help with that clarity. Would you say is uh, a typical request from a, a client when it comes to you know talking to you about maybe solving their their issues from an acoustics perspective or, or at least achieving certain parameters that they're looking for absolutely there's probably two stages of work that we typically get pulled in one is quite early on in the the feasibility stage where clients are looking at very early stages of design and concept design where we'll come in and be able to from the ground up understand the needs of the space, um, the requirements of the actual construction itself, and be able to advise certain do's and don'ts, particularly around material selection and the facade finishes to be able to tackle those problems well before they've been introduced. Unfortunately, the sort of second stage we get carried in is quite often sort of post-construction down the line where those things haven't been considered the space has a certain requirement and, and that it needs to meet. Uh, there are some pretty well-documented Australian standards and guidelines in terms of um, speech intelligibility and privacy and reverberation times that are standardised across different working environments and education environments. So all we're there to do is sort of assist with them in terms of providing feasible mitigation measures and ways to, to improve the, the situations that they're dealing with at the moment. Jonathan, you and I are not uh, acoustic experts. I mean, we have a, a bit of a feel for it and a bit of an understanding. But how often do we try and, you know, talk to our, our clients about bringing in acoustic expertise and, you know, just getting ahead of potential issues that, that we can already see panning out in the future? Yeah, that's definitely something we talk to clients about. And, you know, I think, you know, where we're in the AV industry, a lot of people have this conception that, you know, the technology can solve the acoustic problems. Uh, you know, I can uh, wave my magic wand and put a super fancy, super credulous microphone <laughs> in in the space and all of a sudden everybody sounds fantastic without uh, addressing the elephant in the room that is the, the actual physical build of the room, the acoustics. So they definitely go hand in hand because, you know, the better the acoustics of the space, the better performance that we can deliver from the technology perspective. Well, that's probably a good, good way to transition into talking about inside spaces. I mean... We've worked with you, Daniel, you know, a number of times now and in the education sector and also in, in workspace sector. You, know, you mentioned a little bit earlier that you often get called in, you know, perhaps no one's really paid attention to acoustics or um, didn't realise they needed to. In any case, uh, it's a reverberant box which you can't really sit in for more than five seconds. Uh, if you're trying to have any in a common meeting or, or video conference, you've been there and done that. I mean, maybe maybe <laughs> you could talk to us about 
a recent example um, a couple of years ago where we where we had that exact issue and what did you do to sort of diagnose, understand, uh, resolve, and then you know finally deliver a, a completely um, functioning working room? No, absolutely. I think typically this particular space was was quite a reflective environment. There were you know floor to ceiling, glass walls, unfurnished gibrock spaces, large polished boardroom tables. So um, you know reflections everywhere. And the intention was to obviously improve speech intelligibility, not just within the room for you know long-term comfortable speech, but also to improve the quality of the conferencing system that was installed. So our engagement typically involves sort of early stage site inspections where we'll come in, we'll do a number of acoustic measurements that involve capturing background noise levels, reverberation times, uh, sound transmission between the spaces so that we can get uh, an accurate understanding of exactly what's going on. Uh, we also employ a couple of sophisticated computer modeling using CAD uh, and image source modeling uh, and some acoustic algorithms to determine room modes and resonances and, and have a look at exactly how the room's functioning. Then we typically look at you know array of different acoustic products from various manufacturers, things that can be custom fabricated, where we're looking at in this particular environment, both sound absorbing materials and diffusive materials. So, you know, typically this this is looking at things like, you know, acoustic rated sort of high level broad loom carpets. It's looking at absorptive acoustic panels. It's looking at ceiling tiles that have been either either perforated or rated for acoustic absorption. For this particular project, we wanted to ensure that the design also met all of the, the brand guidelines. So there's quite a big crossover and quite a big trend in terms of aesthetic acoustic, as we like to put it. Gone are the days where you need to have, you know, a big fat acoustic panel slapped on the wall for it to be functional um <laughs> there, there are so many options in terms in terms of laser cutting and etching and, and three-dimensional panels and all, all sorts that can be used to employ and also to function at different frequencies so for this particular project we went through some acoustic modeling and varied a couple of different projects uh products and we presented a couple of mock-ups to, to the client in which they you know they selected the their preferred one came in and installed uh, a number of acoustic ceiling baffles and some decorative acoustic panels that were were tessellated as a uh, as a pattern that represented the the company's branding across one of the walls and then we went back in we did another post occupancy set of measurements to double check reverberation times to make sure that we hit the targets that we set internally and the reverberation times had gone down from something like one and a half to two seconds down to uh, to point two point three seconds in our in our mid frequency, which is perfect for the um, the volume of the room that we were dealing with. So it was a pretty significant change, but exactly what needed to happen to to support the conferencing and the work that was being done um, in that high end space. Yeah, I think that's an interesting point that you make. Uh, it doesn't have to be ugly, and uh, you know you can work with the architects to make the acoustic treatment almost invisible or less invisible, but part of the feature of the room. Absolutely. I think there are some really cool products that are out there on the market. Um, there's acoustic rated gypsum now that can be sprayed on and, and used to fake gyp rock walls. There are uh, acoustic panels that can be custom dyed to be you know exact color matched to, to other, um, other paint products. So yeah, there's absolutely no no shortage of ways to hide acoustic panels. You're referencing back to another project that uh, that we worked with you and the team on over in the education space where we custom printed some artwork and the intention oh, was yes, to, to yes. install that install that in some some gilded frames so that would be you know entirely hidden from sight but still have uh, some pretty aggressive absorption uh, being, being appeared behind it. Oh, that was so cool. I remember when you um, explained that to me for the first time, I just couldn't believe it. I, I mean, it, I didn't even realise that that was a, an option because that was quite a, a, an important room. Uh, I mean, what we're talking about is a, is a secondary school and uh, it was an important room. It had a lot of uh, sort of historical uh, what's the word? Um, sort of, yeah, we were dealing with sort of a heritage listed heritage, space. So, yeah. yeah, so there were restrictions in terms of what could Lots and couldn't be done in terms of permanent fixtures. Mm, uh, mm. It's, it's quite quite common for us to sort of get pulled in where we do have these sort of architectural restrictions. Um, so looking at ways to either have modular treatment that isn't fixed or, or looking at ways that we can hide sort of quite intense acoustic treatment in some cases uh, because you do have limited uh, surface area to be able to treat. So it's looking at putting the right treatment in the right spot to be the most effective based on placement of personnel or other AV equipment 
to make sure that it does sort of do all the heavy lifting without feeling as though it's it's taken up most of the surface area of the space. <laughs> I think the moral of what I'm hearing you say there, Daniel, is I'm an acoustics guy. Talk to me early on and we can, you know, <laughs> sort out some of these issues before they become true issues. That, that's what I'm really hearing. Here. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that, that's the dream, mate. <laughs> Which is the same with audio visual, isn't it, Jonathan? I mean, uh, the earlier we can be engaged in, uh, in the conversation, the easier we can make it for the clients and uh, interior designers as well who are trying to build physical spaces and, and you know, just deliver great experiences for end users. From day one. That's right, yeah. All right, well, now the part I was really um, looking forward to, I mean, not that this has been boring so far, Daniel, but now <laughs> let's get into the real exciting stuff where, you know, we're talking about professional music uh, or professional recording of sound. I mean, I, I don't really know too much about this in terms of what you do because we've never really engaged with you on this front, but I would love to hear you share for all of us here and tell us all about recording studios, live music venues, the video stuff you do. Um, over to you, mate. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, our, our bread and butter is designing sort of high performance spaces for multimedia, everything from recording studios to auditoria and theaters and cinemas. The sweet spot is we come from musical backgrounds. We're all quite creative. Um, and it's taking a lot of those philosophies into the space where we're not approaching it purely as as an architect or as a stereotypical acoustician, um, there's quite a lot involved in terms of understanding workflows and the requirements um, of being hands-on within the space. So there are quite slim margins in terms of how these rooms uh, can perform, uh, especially when you're looking at even frequency distribution and reflections and managing room modes and vibration isolation. And so all, all of these elements that are involved in, in designing a high-performance space have to come together quite eloquently to be able to perform it at, at a level that's that's commercially viable. So yeah, we, we're typically involved on complete turnkey solutions all the way from early stage feasibility studies and site selection all the way through the design and concept phase, um, through managing any count, sort of council planning and um, and requirements that are done in, in that early stage of planning, uh, all the way through to construction, uh, equipment fit out, selection, commissioning, calibration, and then sort of final handover. So we can uh, we can typically take a project which you know as you mentioned quite early, it's, it's important to understand the integration of all of these systems quite early on so that they can be managed to to ensure that at the end of the day when you you hit play on the playback system that everything spit out exactly as assumed and everything's sort of meeting the targets that were set quite early on. So what are some examples of, of things you've recently been working on or currently working on ju- just so we can get a feel? No, absolutely. We've, we've just recently finished a couple of Dolby Atmos certified post-production spaces over at Disney Studios in Moore Park. Wow. Um, these are quite high sensitivity spaces where we're looking at multi-channel audio distribution with projection that needs to be capable of, of sort of high-end color grading as well. So there are quite a lot of restrictions in terms of materials and colors that we can use so we're not influencing light reflection. It's making sure that we're working within bounds of those existing buildings. So, you know, when we've got something like 36 uh, loudspeakers, you know, four massive subs, you know, all, all going on at once, and then yeah, they can't be audible in the in the next building. There's quite a lot uh, that we need to consider in regards to building isolation. So you know, floating floors and vibration isolation systems. It's quite aggressive sort of wall construction systems, plus all of the internal um, room acoustics, which involves tuning the room. So we've got reverberation times that are within sort of from point two to point two five seconds across the range to ensure that when we do install and calibrate the loudspeaker systems that we can trust exactly what's coming out of them and that they'll all translate regardless of whether that's being played back on a mobile phone or a um, you know a Dolby certified system out in out in the theaters. So it's it's giving um it's giving the clients the sort of trust to be able to to do their work and deliver their deliverables at a standard that's that's commercially acceptable. Oh, that sounds insane. Uh, highly specialized. Yeah, I think it's, again, we sort of come from the world where having owned and built our own recording studios and having that hands-on experience from the ground up, uh, understanding exactly what the requirements are from an operator perspective, and then coming into these spaces and working directly with business owners and producers and directors um, when they're setting up facilities for their own productions. 
it's being able to give advice all the way through from not just the building construction, but also the system design components. It's being able to engage with our partners and our suppliers in in terms of providing a complete system design. Uh, and this is sort of quite common across a lot of industries where, you know, we do quite a lot of work in uh, in the live sound world where it's, it's a very similar aesthetic where uh, we'll be dealing with the, the venue acoustics and then internal audio systems for presentation. And at the end of the day, it, it is the, I guess, the marriage between the, the physical room construction and the system itself that needs to work. You know, you can't have one without the other. And uh, in the same way that we spoke about the office environments above is, you know, there's, there's no point having the world's best conferencing system if the room's fighting against it. And the, the same the same is definitely applicable in, in these sort of spaces. Wow. I mean, Jonathan, I think you and Daniel should probably get together because you're building a house, mates, and um, <laughs> you'll probably want to have some... Uh... Home theatre system, mate. There we go. <laughs> I want oh, the great and, and sound inside, <laughs> but also not annoy the neighbours. <laughs> there we go. There we go. It's a real concern, I think, when people are looking at installing these sort of systems without considering you know, the impacts to, to nearby neighbours. There are a couple of projects that we're working on at the moment that are developing life performance spaces, and then we've got residential neighbours you know, within 10 metres of the space. Uh, and ensuring that, you know, our, our job as, as consultants is to make sure that there is no impact to amenities of any of the residential neighbours uh, aside from that. So it's putting the, the right mitigation measures in place from the early stages so that post-construction when we do all of our sort of initial commissioning tests and making sure that everything sort of meets those standards, is there's no surprises. You know, we, we've gone through quite diligently, you know, all of the design aspects. We've done all of our, you know, acoustic modeling and on-site testing and, and made sure that we've got a, a pretty accurate representation of exactly what every piece of material, what every construction method's doing to spit something out on the other end. Coming more and more valuable because all of the developments that I'm seeing happening in, in Sydney today are no longer single use they're all mixed use so you've got you know Absolutely. a residential apartment right above a a commercial environment where they've got live sound and they've got music or it's a bar or they want to have that bar because they want to activate the community but then you've got people Absolutely. living right on top of it and you've got to kind of accommodate both of those use cases no very very much so and i think it's it's interesting seeing how technology is assisting with that as well i mean using you know, these sort of building automation systems like QSYS and Crestron and, and understanding how we can be intelligent with the way that the space works and sort of marrying all of the acoustic consulting work that we do in terms of sort of isolating spaces and ensuring that there is no changes to amenity. And then I guess quite creative with the way that you use intelligent systems. Uh, you know, now that AI is sort of moving to the forefront, it's looking at um, ways that, you know, machine learning and AI can be used to, to understand different patron capacities so we can adjust volume levels based on ambient noise levels inside and patron activity. It's using you know, intelligent read switching where, you know, if a window is open, we're ducking PA systems down by 10 dB to ensure that, you know, even if a window is open, it's still not um, breaching any sort of noise threshold. So there is consideration at every stage to make sure that, you know, and as population density increases and we are, you know, sort of building on top of each other, it just becomes more and more, more and more prevalent. For those of you that can't see Jonathan's face, he is nodding <laughs> furiously with a huge smile on his face. He's very excited. <laughs> this is your world, mate. It's an interesting topic because it's really the world that we live in as well. You know, all of these systems have to combine to have a nice ecosystem to do your day-to-day -day work, but also to play and sleep and rest. Absolutely. And, you know, it, there's so much research being done in terms of, you know, the importance of, of acoustics with sleep health and, uh, you know, with long-term mental health. And, you know, the psychoacoustic side of things is, is quite important and it's something that you know, in any environment should be considered because it, it does affect the way that we live and because it's not something that's tangible and we can reach out and, you know, if a room is too dim, we know to turn on a light. But, you know, if a room's too reverberant, it's not second nature for us to, to go and, and find a fix to that. So there is a bit of a reliance on consultants like yourselves and, and us to, to encourage people to really consider that, especially when you know, they have the opportunity to deal with it from the ground up in a new development. It's taking advantage of all these new technologies and products that are available once the, the building's all up and running to present themselves with an environment that's that's quite unique, that's it's great to be in, you know, and that encourages people to do what they're supposed to do in the space without fear of, you know, having any issues of being, you know, overheard or underheard or, or whatever the issue may be. Well, Daniel, it is an absolute pleasure uh, having you as a guest here on the show and um, to have sat here for 20-odd for minutes 
having the benefit of you sharing your um, very wide uh, and extensive knowledge on audio and acoustics. So, you know, we thank you very much for that. No, thank you, mate. Very much appreciated. What can the listeners do? Where can they find you? Where's the best place to sort of get a hold of you? Is it at your website or LinkedIn? What What's the best way? Yeah, absolutely. If you if you want to jump, yeah, either or. So you can either jump on akaacoustics.com uh, and just reach out to us there or feel free to shoot me a message directly on LinkedIn. Always, always happy to help. Fantastic. Well, thanks again, Daniel. Um, really appreciate it. Thank you, Jonathan. Another great episode. And uh, I think this was a little bit stronger than our first acoustics <laughs> yes. uh, podcast uh, a number of months ago. What do you reckon? <laughs> absolutely. Yes. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Tech Simple Podcast. To like, share, or discover more episodes, head over to Spotify. If you'd like to talk to us about AV in your workplace or learning environment, book an initial discovery call with David or Jonathan at connectus.com.au. And remember, 